I'm Greg Wells. I am a musician and a uh, sound engineer and a just a big general geeky noisemaker across the boards. It's the thing with speakers is you get used to whatever you are listening to. Our brains start to learn it and it starts to sound right. Of course, you don't realize it's wrong until you hear it somewhere else. That's happened to me with mixes and uh, mixing on the wrong speakers. There's a world of speakers that sound great, but mixes don't translate on them. And I didn't know that. Just constantly, constantly realizing that objectivity in the studio is the most important thing because I'm not making music for me. I'm making music for everybody else. So I need to hear it through something that's really, 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 really telling me the truth in a very, very objective way. My first introduction to any kind of digital room correction was communication with one of my favorite record producers, Eric Valentine. He told me about the Trinoff. He's like, you've got to hear what this does. And, and he was talking about his favorite speakers that he'd ever bought. I can't remember the name of the speakers. Once he set the Trinoff up, he tweaked it a bit and he it's just he couldn't believe what he was hearing. And so that was such a vote of confidence for me. My first experience listening to the speakers that I knew very well, but hearing them through the Trinoff was not in this studio. It was in a temporary studio. And I had uh, Thomas O'Connor, who works at Vintage King, come and he did the mic measurements. He did the whole thing, he dialed it in. And it's crazy fast. And then I started listening to my playlist that I know very well. And I couldn't really believe what I was hearing. There was like all this information that I hadn't really noticed before. And again, like Eric Valentine loved his speakers pre Trinoff and he loved them even more post Trinoff. I had the same experience with my PMCs that are here. These huge, you know, like Stanley Kubrick monolith 2001 speakers. They're amazing. I will never part with them, but I do like them better with the Trinoff and it's like a different experience. Then I started doing mixes with the Trinoff and that took me a minute to acclimate because I was so used to the sound of, of these PMCs. But I started doing mixes and then listening to that in the car and then bringing that home and listening and going, oh, okay. I sound like a better mixer. And that's the effect that the PMC speakers had on me when I got them. Producer, mix engineer, Rich Costi said that to me before I got the PMC. He's like, Greg, my career is pre PMC speakers and post PMC speakers. And I can kind of say the same thing, but I would also add Trin off to that equation too. That's a new bridge that I didn't know was going to even appear, but I have happily crossed that bridge now and I would never mix without it in. In particular, I noticed the low end did a whole other thing. There was a depth to the very, very low end, like the subs. Uh, and it's not like these speakers were lacking low end before. There was oh, there's always been plenty of accurate low end, but with the turn off, it's a different thing. It's like really low. Like I felt like I was hearing, you know, 15 Hertz, 20, 15 Hertz uh, with no bumps. I no longer need to double check anywhere. That's a big one. I mean, I do listen out in the car, not just for sonics, but like for creative ideas. But in terms of um, the framing of everything and the perspective, I really don't need to check anywhere else now, which is like bizarre because my most of my whole life, like you had to do that or, or you were, I mean, some of my friends who are, who are only mix engineers, who are the world's biggest mix engineers, won a bazillion Grammys and working with every massive star constantly, they're all banging their door down. They check their mixes in their car. They don't send anything out till the next day. They're still doing that. And that's, it's not like it's a bad plan. It's a good idea. It's not going to get worse if you do that, but it just speeds things up for me. It lets me get so much more done. 
it's so bananas what this thing can do and does do so well and so quickly. And it's so tweakable to taste after it does the analysis. It's incredible. I think you get, when you think about what it does, especially for a geek like me making recorded music, it's like, it's, it's a no brainer. It's an investment in my career. My mixes have never sounded better. They translate better from everywhere from movie theaters to cars to my home Sonos system to my iPhone speaker. I hear the difference. Yeah, it's not, it's, there's, there's cheaper things you can buy, but then if you're trying to do room correction that does more than EQ, and it, it really is like doing very complicated stuff, I can't think of anything else that does it. It's probably a waste of money. They either don't do it or do this.